Hey everybody, welcome back to the K2N Online Paddle School. We're back here on YouTube with a quick tip. Before we get started, thank you so much for checking out the YouTube page. And don't forget to subscribe to get weekly updates on our quick tips. If there are any topics that you want to see discussed in the future, please comment or message us and we can get those videos out to you. All right, let's get right to it. So today we're talking about rotational forces in the seated position. Outrigger canoe, surf ski, and kayak take place in the seated position. How we move our body is very specific to this position that we're in. There are many reasons that paddlers will not use rotational forces in the seated position, either coming from not having any experience or being trained in a non-efficient way. We're gonna talk about both of those today. But first, why is rotational forces that important within the seated paddle stroke? The first thing we can do is we can look at high level paddlers and see that when they're in the seated position, they are using their hips and their shoulders to go through these motions. So instantly we know that if we try to emulate that, that we are mimicking the highest forms of paddling. More scientifically, as we are in this seated position, the only way that we can engage the legs, the hips, the shoulders, and the entirety of the body is by rotating. If we are bending forward and sitting up, we are only using some of our muscles. The amount of leverage and torque that we can create from moving our legs to power the hips, to power the shoulders, is maximal as we rotate. Rotational forces reveal themselves in many athletic motions. At the K2N Online School, we use analogies like throwing a football, throwing a javelin, throwing a punch. There are so many dynamic motions that come from rotating the body. These leverages, the torque, all of these things are the forces that we use to propel the boat. By not utilizing your rotational forces, you're barring one of the best movers that the human anatomy can provide. Being in the seated position specifically, we are limited with how we can connect our body because we have an inherent amount of weight on our sit bones. So now that we know why rotational forces are advantageous within the stroke, we can look at the reasons why paddlers are not utilizing them. The first reason stems from being inexperienced with the motion. As you learn new movements, it is hard to engage the entirety of the body. It is easy to move your arms independently of the body. If you watch any motion being taught, typically the first thing we do as humans is try to just use our arm to complete that motion. Give a four-year-old a ball and they pick it up, they are just going to use their arm and just try and throw it like so. Only from specific training do we know to turn the body, load the arm, rotate the hips, push off the leg, and to throw in a very efficient way. All of that is very learned. Very seldom does somebody know to do all those things inherently to throw a ball as opposed to just pushing the arm as hard as we can. Using that analogy back to paddling, it is easiest to sit and lock the entirety of the body and only move the arms. So we're taking a canoe stroke, or the kayak stroke. What compounds on this is the inherent stability demand of individual boats. The more we move the hips and the shoulders, the more we are interacting with the boat by shifting our weight around. The chance of falling out of your vessel go up dramatically. If you can sit perfectly still and keep your weight dead center and timidly move your arms around your center of gravity, you can keep an unstable vessel upright. Not learning to move your hips and unlock those rotational forces is a limiting factor as you spend time using your arms exclusively. It becomes muscle memory that is very hard to unlearn. Moving the hips is a very learned motion, but these rotational forces are worth taking the time to get under your belt. The other way to misuse the arms is by having them overextended and using these arms exclusively to go through the motion. Compounding this by leaning forward and sitting up and staying very square with the motion, now this is a learned movement that typically translates over from Dragon Boat. You will not see the motion of most dragon boat movements 
translating directly to an outrigger canoe and being successful. Top end outrigger canoe paddlers paddle differently than what you see within a team boat. But where does this optimization stem from? There are other single blade paddle sports in which we see both arms extend out and completing the paddle stroke with a high level of success. Those two are stand up paddle board and high knee canoe. What is the difference between SUP, high knee canoe, and the seated paddle sports which we've distinctly labeled today? The answer to that is the freedom of hip motion. Within the SUP and the high knee canoe, you can literally move your hips through space back and forth throughout the stroke. They tangibly go forward and down towards the water and as you're completing the stroke, those hips are moving through space. This additional hip motion changes how our elbows are going to interact with the stroke. In the seated position, we have to bend at the elbows to facilitate more rotational forces because our hips cannot move. Hips in the seated position can swivel. But if I were in this seated position here and I was to shoot my hips forward six inches, forward and down, and come back into the seat, it would be impossible. The moment I scoot out of my seat, I would just fall. How we interact with the water in the seated position is much different than what we can do standing or kneeling because of that freedom of motion with the hips. So the ability to literally travel forward with the torso and sit upright is gonna change how we use our arms throughout that stroke because it's not the arms going through the motion, the arms are just holding and now you can see as I come forward here and move, all of this motion is coming from my legs, hips, and shoulders and my arms are just holding on. In the seated position, I can't go into that same place that I can all the way up here. Meaning this forward and back pivoting comes exclusively at the abdomen or at the hip. So we just collapse and sit up. And this is much weaker than using the legs to bring the body much further forward. There are no world champion seated single blade paddlers that go through a motion with both arms completely straight and pivoting exclusively at the torso. All of them incorporate rotational forces. The shoulder is going to come forward and as they complete the stroke, the opposite shoulder is forward and they're switching this position constantly forward and back. This is one of the fun aspects of outrigger canoe translating directly to the surf ski. Because we're in the same seated position, how we operate with our body is very similar. The outrigger canoe will feature a little bit of leaning forward and sitting up, and the surf ski is exclusively rotational, but there's still rotational forces that correlate between the two disciplines. why you'll see crossover athletes instantly find a high level of success because it's very similar. On the opposite side of the spectrum, paddlers with a stand-up paddleboard background typically suffer tremendously in the seated position because all of the things that they were using to be successful on the stand-up paddleboard are no longer that beneficial and they have to go to further extremes of rotational forces that are much more limited in the standing position. There are always aspects that cross over, but when we look at these extremes, we can see the strengths and weaknesses fall into place. In the surf skier kayak stroke, right, the shoulders are oriented like so, the stroke begins, it ends, they switch, and then we have a second blade to set up the stroke on the opposite side. Our ability to swivel the shoulders and swivel the hips dictate how efficiently we can move the vessel over a period of time. In the outrigger canoe, we lean forward a little bit, turning the shoulders, same idea, sitting up and rotating, reloading and going back and forth. 
your ability to turn and find these rotational forces within the stroke or what is the difference in being fast. If you want more details on that, we got a hundred videos for surf ski and outrigger canoe breaking down every minute detail of the stroke, including those big macro movements of rotational forces. Compounding that with directional forces, top hand is pushing down, bottom hand is in good position, shoulders are swiveling, using the legs to create upward force. These are a lot of ideas that we go into a lot more detail on the K2N online paddle school.com. Making sure that you are utilizing your rotational forces within the stroke is one of the most important things that you can get under your belt early on in your paddling career. Great. Thank you so much for checking out the video today. If you want to see other topics discussed in the future, again, leave a comment, like, subscribe. It helps the YouTube page out a lot. We'll see you guys next week with the next quick tip.